Okay, thank you very much, uh, sir, for talking to me at this uh, short notice. Uh, I would like to start by asking you to introduce yourself. Okay, thank you for giving me this opportunity. And uh, my name is uh, Mr. Isachiroma, Minister Isachiroma, for having been a minister for four years in uh, my country. I am an engineer by training, married, and I have uh, three, three daughters. One is doctor, and two others are very well uh, skilled and qualified, and they are abroad. So, and I'm, uh, I have been a, an MP, member of parliament, now former minister, and uh, well, I am dedicated and devoted all my time now for the improvement of the life, of day-to-day -day life of Cameroon and in Cameroon, and uh, within the democratic process uh, which is in place in Cameroon today. Okay, sir. So one of the things that you've been highlighted recently mm -hmm. is your it's your firm backing of the memorandum mm -hmm. that was published mm -hmm. uh, on the north. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me what are the salient points mm -hmm. that you people raised in this memorandum? Well, the memorandum is the outcome of a policy which was conceived in 1983 in 1984, after the abortive attempt of coup d'etat. As you know, uh, most of those who engineered the plot were northerners. When they, they, they uh, foiled the plot and they conceived a policy which consists of ostracizing, marginalizing the ground off. And today the situation became so unbearable so inhumane that uh, the Grand North became a time bomb for this country. Me as a politician, as a, a citizen of this country, aware of what is taking place here and there, I accepted to be part of the team that wrote the memorandum to let Cameroonian in particular and people of good uh, faith all over the world to know that we are marginalized we are being punished for 22 years, and now we are fed up, and we say that enough is enough. We have to make it out that uh, clear and out that you have to know what is taking place in the North. And uh, when we conceive and publish the memorandum, nobody can deny one single line of what is written in this wonderful document. So uh, we did it to let you people know that uh, something is going wrong in the north. And if this time bomb is not diffused at due time, you should never be surprised tomorrow if something wrong starts from the north, because really people are desperate and destitute. Now, so you say that this uh, memorandum sprang from uh, the abortive coup d'etat. Uh, do you think that it is some sort of punishment for the northerners for trying to overthrow the present regime? Um, it is a conviction. You spend uh, some few days in the north. Unfortunately, you haven't had the time to visit the hinterland. The north is in such a disarray, in such a destitution, uh, that no organized um, uh, people in this country could accept the hardship, the dire condition in which the Nordiners are today. I mean it. I speak it uh, uh, um, clear and loud that the situation became unbearable. If because some Nordiners at any given time took the arm, all of them have been arrested, court-martialed, executed. All of those who at any given time were in charge of a uh, parasitical um, uh, um, company, all of us, we were arrested. Let me remind you that I spent seven years, almost seven years of my life in prison as a political prisoner. So this is a collective punishment which is being implemented in force in the North. This is not, uh, this is not a guess. This is a reality. Okay, so on the ground, people would say that uh, those of you who presented the memorandum, were all, uh, you're all former ministers, sure. and like you say, uh, you were arrested, but you became minister after that. 
Uh, people will want to know why when you were minister, m those of you who have presented this memorandum did not act. Well, you know, uh, they are perfectly right in evocating this remark, which is really pertinent. We were a minister. But uh, I would like you to remember and to, to know that you are a minister for the state, for the republic. You, have, you haven't been appointed as a minister to alleviate the burden or to solve the problem of your area. In the, in the domain where you are a minister, you are in charge of this, this uh, sector all over the country. I am proud of my achievement as a minister for transport for almost four years. Facts speak louder than what you can say and what you can read. I am very proud of my achievement. When you are a minister, you do the best you can to be successful in your own area, but you haven't uh, signed any contract with the people. The head of state, who has been elected on a program, you are his own collaborator. You do the best to improve the economy. You do the best to, 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 to collect a lot of money, but all those things are in, the, in charge and responsibility of the head of state. He signed a contract with the people. He has to implement a policy. You see, not you, Minister. If he gives you um, an instruction, you follow it, you fulfill your commitment. But uh, you, you are not accountable with the people. You are accountable with the head of state whom you are a collaborator, you see. Uh, we heard the people saying that when you were Minister, what, why didn't you do? It, 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 it was impossible. The magnitude of the problems that in which the North is today is beyond the, competi the, the competence and the willingness of a single people. Even all the Northerners combined, combined today cannot solve this problem without a political will. Uh, today you don't have this political will. We accepted to be minister at, uh, in 1982, 92, uh, you know, um, really Fronty was elected as a head of state, but he was deprived of his victory. And uh, he self-proclaimed himself as a, the elected of state. Uh, if you can recall, by that time, the, the state of emergency was declared. We had to choose between uh, saving the republic, which uh, was at the verge of collapse and the civil war, or, um, or to to stick by our principle, which consists of saying, no, Mr. Bia didn't win the, the election, and to join Mr. Fundi, and the consequence might be unforeseeable. So we decided to join the government to save legit, uh, legality, not legitimacy, you see. And this uh, prompted us to violate even some of our principle and to save peace in the country. This is really the motivation of our part to accept to be involved in the BS government. And we did the best we can in order to help our country to, to, to solve some of the problem. But uh, this, um, um, uh, the, the critics which consist of saying that uh, you were a member of the government and you didn't do anything, this doesn't stand the road at all, at all. Okay, sir, so you were minister uh, with most of the, no the others who signed the memorandum. Are you saying that there is lack of political will in the ruling government to alleviate the situation up north? What I am saying is it is obvious, it is clear. In 1984, as I told you, they conceived a policy which, consisting, which, which consists, consisted of, uh, of uh, marginalizing. The, the, this policy implemented uh, results today in the absence of northerners in our civil service. You have, w when, while we are more than 45% of this country in terms of population, today, I challenge anyone to, to prove me that you have 2%, 2% of northerners in the civil service. In my hometown, Garwa, for example, you have less than 40 people who are uh, 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 civil servants in our civil service. I say 40, person, uh, 40 people, including the Minister of State and any other high-ranking uh, official. 
in our administration. The situation is so bad. Uh, I mean, uh, Minister Chiruma, what, what you're saying, these are accusations that are really, really tough. Are you saying that in the whole of Marwa there are not up to 40 people within the civil service, or are you talking of top government positions? I am native of Garwa, and I challenge anybody to prove me that we, you have 40 people in the civil service ranking from what we call back and plus. Impossible to find 40 people, including minister and uh, director, uh, chef service and all others. It is impossible in Garwa today. And this situation for us is unacceptable. We have to speak loud and clear that we are fed up because the future has ceased to bear any hope. Now, when this memorandum came out, uh, government reacted to, to it. What was government's reaction? No reaction. They said that uh, we are uh, uh, not bandit, but something which was not very far away from this. We are in nostalgia. We, want to, we, we wanted to come back to government because we were dismissed and we, are, uh, and, uh, we have this nostalgia of government. They wanted to, to bedevil us. We, we became um, uh, what you call in French, un pêcheur de tournée en rond, you see. So the facts are there and facts are stubborn. You like me, you dislike me. When I am black, I am black. You cannot change it. The facts are there. The, the, all, the, the ground off disposes of everything. Let me tell you this. I spent two days in Bamenda. I, I drove through Bafusam. Bafusam is ten times richer than any city in the ground of. Bamenda is at least twice, if not thrice, larger and more, uh, more uh, um, um, prosperous than any other uh, city in the north. You have to realize it. This was not the case 20 years ago. Mr. Bia must understand that. He is the head of state for all Cameroonians, not for part of Cameroonian. And I say that if having uh, raised, uh, resorted to arm, some Nordiners took the arm, today all the Nordiners gave him the best they can in order to, how can I say it in, uh, in English, my friend, in order to uh, not only to please him, but to, to redeem themselves. Okay? We fail. We are not understood. This situation became unbearable. He has to understand. I'm not talking on my behalf. By the grace of Almighty, I can feed myself. Everything is good as far as I am concerned. But he must understand that time has come for him to listen to, to understand, and to change. Should he fail or adamantly refuse to listen to what we are saying, the consequence is there. When this memorandum came out, uh uh, there were some ministers, ministers in place, uh, led by the, the, the President of the House of Assembly and the Minister of State in charge of uh, territorial administration and decentralization. They took a massive tour up north, disclaiming the memorandum. They did it just for the sake of their own interests. People are starving. People are dying in the Grand North. You have less than 13% of the population who are educated, who can read and write. You spend time in the North to get yourself understood even in French. You need somebody to translate from our uh, dialect into French for you to understand, to communicate with people. These are facts. You cannot change it. They went there just to be us, to say that we, we, we are, uh, by sensitizing people, by galvanizing people to be part and parcel of the, the process of change in this country, to be the architect of their life, they say that we are uh, uh, inciting people to, to, to become rebel and to destroy peace. Cameroon is in peace. What, what kind of claim? When you cannot feed yourself, when you cannot dress yourself, when you cannot educate yourself, when you are disposes of everything, you say that Cameroon is at peace, 
this is a lie. This is not truth. And people know they, they spend time, they were ridiculous. They were ridiculous. And they have to understand that they are ridiculous. Now, so let's go to the coalition. Uh, apparently, uh, with the presence of, uh, uh, there, is a, there is a real firm presence of uh, top politicians from the north within the present coalition. Do you think that this memorandum is going to galvanize the people of the north during these coming elections for, for change? There is no doubt. There is no doubt. You see, there is a proverb in my area which says that when somebody is stronger than you, he can use your own arms and slap your face. This is what CPDM is doing over there. You see, um, unfortunately, I wonder if you had the opportunity to read this memorandum. Please read it. You are a Cameroonian to understand the, the, the danger which is looming large over our head. You have a very black cloud which is hanging over our head like a Damocles sword. I, I, I don't know if you say it in English. This is something which is hanging over our head. So this memorandum will galvanize for sure. This is the most important campaign to sensitize. But we, are, we know one thing. All the laws are tailored to serve Mr. Beer's purpose. The administration is dedicated to confiscate the power because through Mr. Beer, all civil uh, uh, servants are doing what they want. The, our um, um, Supreme Court, appointed by Mr. Beer, was already spoiled by him. They are there just uh, to legalize the fraud, massive fraud. We know the result. On air, which is there, appointed by Mr. Beer, they were courageous enough to, to report what is wrong in our electoral process. But they have no choice but to testify that uh, the election were free and fair, so that Mr. Beer, even before running the election, uh, is already elected. There is no doubt about it. Mr. Beer cannot be the one who organized the election and have the administration devoted, dedicated to him, all the laws tailored for, tailored for him, and to, to, to say that he is defeated. We know this, but we have to galvanize, to sensitize, to mobilize Cameroonian, to let them know that they have to stand up, never give up, never give in the pressure of uh, CPDM. We have to be ready to, to, to fight for the sake of peace, for the sake of democracy. Today you have, um, you see, Cameroon is a, a country of 16 million. You have uh, less than 4 million who are voters. Cameroonians are disfranchised. So, you see, uh, to come back to the question that you put to me, memorandum will galvanize, will sensitize. And I hope that uh, uh, the Northerners will, will be their, their own saviors and to let the world know that they cannot. You see, uh, uh, okay, let me stop in this, in this point. Okay, sir, uh, tell me, how is the coalition faring today? Who are the people who make up this coalition? Well, the, the, the coalition is faring very well. Uh, we spend a nice time in Baminda uh, scrutinizing, assessing the situation from the birth of this coalition up to date. Uh, the, the future, which yesterday was bleak, uh, begins to be brighter. And I am hopeful that uh, uh, we will be able to bring together the broken pieces in terms of the member of the opposition who at any given time we dispersed, we are going to unite, to galvanize and to mobilize as many outstanding politicians as possible. Because this fight, no single political party can make it. Even united, without the backing and the support of the people, it wouldn't be possible to win this victory.
even united without the help of Democrat, of, uh, of the rest of the world, it wouldn't be easy, easy to unroot Mr. Bia. So we are very well aware of this, and uh, uh, the, the coalition is doing very well. We have uh, very outstanding people there, uh, Chairman Frondi and Damjoya, uh, Minister Yondo, Minister uh, Hogbelen, uh, Minister Sanda, Minister Antar, myself, and many others. And uh, Jean-Jacques Ikindi is going to join the, the coalition and many others. So all the, the prominent members of the opposition, all the emblematic figures, those who uh, were really um, the founding leaders, we understood that uh, by being divided, we played the game in the hand of uh, CPDM. Uh, our, the honor our, and our responsibility compel us into coming together to draw the line and uh, to be forward-looking people, not backward-looking backward people. Now, sir, tell me, what is the policy? What policy is the coalition presenting? What alternative are they presenting to the people of Cameroon today? Yes, we wrote a, a, a political blueprint in which we emphasize what uh, the policy of the opposition should the, the opposition win the election, the opposition will, going to, will be going to implement. First of all, we have to, the, the next head of state, if he comes from the opposition, will be in office for just for three years, for getting things right, to rewrite the constitution, to, uh, well, I, I don't know, uh, for you to really understand what, is, what uh, the program contains, you have to take notice of this document. But what I can say is that uh, the Constitution is the, the most important item in our own agenda. We have to get it right, because today, as I said a while ago, all the laws are tailored to meet Mr. Beers and his, his regime uh, needs. So. Uh, we want the Constitution to be impersonal, to be uh, f uh, fair, and uh, we want the election to be uh, organized and monitored by an in independent body. We want, uh, well, to go through the Constitution and to get everything okay, to update the Constitution and to make it suitable to the, to the world, to the world of uh, democracy, or the world where the the rule of law is prevailing, where the human uh, rights are protected. This, this is really the stuff which are included in this. But uh, uh, you have to go through it, to read it, and to understand the meaning and uh, the significance of, uh, of uh, our program, political program. Uh, now, has the coalition come out with, uh, with, with uh, a criteria for who will be selected? as its candidate? <laughs> well, for the time being, we are, we are sensitizing people. We are galvanizing. Uh, you have Cameroonian, most of Cameroonian are fatalistic. Because of what? Because they say that either they vote or not against Mr. Beer, he will be declared elected. Then there is no point for them to register and to go and vote. The most important thing that we have to do today is to sensitize is to galvanize and to let Cameroonians know that you cannot at the same time want a peaceful change in your country and abstain from uh, um, uh, um, uh, voting. You have to register and go and vote. This is the most important item in our own agenda. We have time. We will set up a criteria or uh, for the, for, 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 for the selection of our nominee, for, 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 our, for our nominee who is going to run under the banner of the opposition. This will take place uh, in the near future. You should never be uh, concerned. We, are, we have it in, in, in our mind and in our spirit, and at due, time, at due time it's going to be done, no problem. Now you talk about uh, uh, the voters' apathy that is going on in the country. Uh, what is the coalition doing? to get people to register and vote? 
Yes, uh, we we have started uh, 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 to organize rallies in the country. One very important rally uh, took place already in Douala. Uh, the day before yesterday, we held a, a very important uh, rally with a huge crowd in Bamenda. Next week, next Saturday, we have a very important meeting which is to take place in uh, in, uh, in in Boya, uh, ne next in Bafusam, in the in the east, then we will uh, ride to the ground north. Uh, we have just one single message. Uh, if you want uh, to preserve our country from uh, any violent disturbance, says, if you don't like civil war. You have to be a democrat. You have to be the architect of your life. And to be a democrat and an architect of your life, you have to vote. To, before you vote, you have to register and you have to remain vigilant. This is the message that we are conveying to Cameroonians. We are, we, are, we are telling them that uh, time has come for you not to give in, not to be discouraged. Because to be discouraged, you give the green light to those who are at the helm today to, to continue to persist in their wrongdoing. You have to stand up, never be discouraged. You see, uh, Cameroonians are in a, in a such mess, in, is they are entangled in two things, fear and uh, this, the, the, the ideas of uh, guilty. You have to pull yourself out of fear. You are the worst enemy of a human being is a fear. You should never be in this situation. So this is what we are doing. We meet Cameroonians, sensitize them, and say, look, yesterday we were divided. Today we are uniting ourselves. And in the near future, we, we will be united. Please do what we are doing. Listen to what we are telling you. Be ready to, 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 to register. Be ready to, sell it, to, to vote for the candidate that uh, the opposition uh, will uh, nom will nominate if this takes place and people vote and the elections are rigged what would you tell people well uh, we are uh, working a very efficient very powerful alternative program we know the result as I told you never Cameroonian felt so bad in their mind, in their spirit, like today. Everything is going down the drain. It will be paradoxical if Mr. Beer says that uh, he is elected with 80% uh, uh, when even in, in, the, in, in his own area, Cameroonians are fed up, they are desperate. You see? So uh, we are working an alternative solution to this. But excuse me, if I give you this program, you are going to air it and it will be uh, of no use at all, you see. Okay, so let's go to the third point. Um, I would just like to start by asking you, can you remember uh, what you were doing the day President Ahijo resigned? Well, uh, <laughs> I was at home in Douala. I was a uh, deputy director for transport. When uh, let I Joe resign, I could not believe, because personally I know him. When I was a student in Paris, I, I used to meet him whenever he comes to Paris or whenever I am on vacation here in Cameroon. I used to meet him, and really, no sign, no outside sign, uh, could uh, lead us to believe that uh, he would resign. I was uh, shocked and I was thrown in a such a disarray because uh, of a sudden everything changed in your life. So really uh, I was in this spirit when I heard that, uh, I listened to the radio that uh, he decided to resign and to hand uh, over power to his constitutional successor. Uh, you say uh, things changed in your life. What changed in your life? Well. Um, when Mr. Beer uh, rose to power, uh, uh, um, was uh, um, 
come to the office. I was really very much uh, delighted because we were uh, in a dictatorship. Cameroon was uh, prosperous, business was booming, everything was okay, but we were deprived of the right of speaking out our mind. You cannot. When Mr. Aijo left the office, I said, well, an intellectual come to the office. And I spent eight years of my life in Paris practicing democracy, open democracy. Now that we have an intellectual as head of state, we say that the future will be brighter. Uh, the economy will continue to prosper when the freedom of speech will come to complete the, 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 the economy prosperity. This is the spirit in which I was. So I was delighted. I was delighted because I said that, well, I can speak and uh, uh, I will be part and, pro of the, part and parcel of the process that will, will, will take place in the country to, 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 well, to ease the spirit and mind of people and to move forward. Uh, did this come true? Unfortunately, in 1982, in, in 1983, when the so-called um, uh, um, um, coup d'etat was uh, revealed, we understood that we in ordinance, we were, we were done. The future, which we thought would be brighter, became somber and dark. And we understood that a, mach in a very, very deadly machinery was uh, was uh, uh, was uh, in place to to smash a kind of uh, stream roller was put in place to to crush all the naughtiness. I was a civil and I was a uh, I, I, I was working in our railway company as I told you. I was arrested after the abortive attempt of uh, coup d'etat in 1984. I was court-martialed. I was freed by the court. But they kept me, they kept me in prison for more than six years, free, liberated by their own court. But they decided to keep me in prison, as they did for most of uh, those who were in a uh, um, general manager of uh, in, in many of our company because because of what because they were naughtiness just to that so unfortunately mr beer didn't deliver he didn't he failed uh can you tell me how will you consider ahijo's leadership style compared to that of president beer today <laughs> well um today you can speak your mind, but because of democracy, because Cameroonian fought the hardest, the toughest way for the advent of democracy. Um, unfortunately, I could not have a time to enjoy Mr. Beer's uh, rule. Uh, I was arrested in 1984, put in jail, and freed in, 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 in 1991 with the advance of democracy. And I fought the hardest way to get democracy. Now you can speak out your mind. You, are, you, are, you have a freedom of speech, of speech, freedom of press, in, in so-called, you can do it. This, because we fought. Mr. Bia uh, did not, uh, out of his generosity, and decided that, well, freedom, not at all. You have the casualties of uh, democracy. People die in their hundred, even not in their thousand, in the ground off. Uh, the first casualty uh, took place in Baminda. I, I recall it the day before yesterday. But if today you can speak freely, but Cameroonian pay the price, this is the difference between Aijo style and Mr. Beer style. Today I can speak out my mind, but I am deprived of everything. Not me as a such, but the, 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 the huge, the large majority of Cameroonian would prefer listen to what I'm telling you. If you discuss with Cameroonian, really, the, the, the large majority of Cameroonian regret 
the former regime. I say that it is possible to build prosperity with democracy. Today we have a, not democracy, freedom of speech. Because democracy today in Cameroon does not allow Cameroonians to change the regime out of a ballot box. It is impossible. Impossible. So you have freedom of speech, freedom of press, but not democracy. This is the difference between the two regimes, according to me. In Aijo, you have uh, the uh, economic prosperity, but you don't have a freedom of speech. Today, you have freedom of speech, but we completely lost even the basic to live with. So tell me, um, at this point in time, uh, Cameroonians uh, clamor for the return of uh, the the remains of the late uh, President Ahijo. Mm -hmm. uh, what's your thought on this? Well, um, this is the most important problem that you are raising. Um, no matter what took place between Bia and Ahijo, you and I, we don't know what took place between them. But no matter what took place, when you are the father of the nation, by your own position as head of state, you have to transcend. You have, you have to forgive. And you have to listen to the people. Ijo is no more for more than 10 years today. Mr. Beard refuses today to do what he must do. He is talking about reconciliation. Where is this reconciliation? When the late Aizo is in uh, his body, his remains, uh, is or are in, uh, in, in Senegal. You see, this is the problem. Mr. Bia must understand that with him or without him, one day, solemnly, officially, with dignity and honor, Aijo remains will be brought back home and uh, 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 um, a, a due uh, burial ceremony would be given to it with him or without him. I would wish when minister, I, I strongly advocate for that. I wrote a letter to Minister Beer, to, 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 to President Bia and I said that you are talking of reconciliation. We need it. But the first steps will consist of bringing back the remain of Aijo and all other Cameroonians who fought for the independence of our country, for the democracy of our country, take their body with due respect, solemnity, and consideration. He doesn't like it. He doesn't. Because he's in the spirit that maybe Cameroon is his own private property. Even, even, even this, he fails to remember that power. Without Aijo, he wouldn't have a raise to power. He completely forgot it. So we are fighting. We are fighting, and we think that the first thing that the next head, head of state will do in order to reconcile Cameroon with, 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 with their history will consist of taking back the body of, of all of those who, in one way or other, fought for the sake of the prosperity and peace of their country. Thank you very much, Minister. Thank you. You are welcome, BBC.